Hey everybody, uh, so hope everybody's doing well. I know the uh, coronavirus has hit a lot of places, but I um, hope everybody's staying safe and healthy. Um, but with that, today I want to talk about um, chain code access control. So I wanna show you a new uh, pattern that I've worked on um, that actually uses fabric-based chain code access control. So this was something that's been really good, um, being able to customize exactly what functions or what part of the smart contract or of the application a user can access based on their certificate. Um, so what makes blockchain and Hyperledger Fabric great is that the, each um, identity or each participant within an application is granted these public and private keys and we can um, use these certificates to see who they are um, and we can trace back every transaction to those certificates. Um, and today I want to teach you how to use chain code based access control. Um, so again, this is the repo that I'm going to be going through. It's called um, Fabric Contract Role-Based Access Control. So basically there's kind of two main components. First, um, in the smart contract we do the get, a or get current user um, and then by doing that we can see um, which user that's using those credentials from the wallet is actually submitting the transaction. Um, so I'll show you the part of the application that actually is creating these attributes and creating these different types of users, um, and that's going to be the server side and the utils.js. Um, and in here, you can see then we we have to do the register and then enroll user. Um, so basically, sign up a user and register them, but then we have to enroll them too, um, and we'll see that through the UI too. But um, basically this user type attribute that's going to be given into the certificate authority is going to create this new user and we're going to have these attributes with that new user so those attributes are going to be either that the um, that the user is a retailer or a regulator a client or a customer or a, a supplier so um, once we, we register them we need to enroll them and of course we pass in these attributes again um, and that's kind of the main part of the of the access control. But again, within the actual smart contract itself, we have so excuse me, we have something a little bit different. So um, within the actual contract itself, we can go into the lib and in the supply chain contract, and then at the bottom we'll see that um, we actually go ahead and get the current user type. And this is what's going to get the attribute value of user type. Um, again, we're going to be able to see if it's a supplier, um, regulator, and then kind of make decisions uh, based on that. So if you're someone like the regulator, you need access to all of those transactions. If you're someone like um, the UPS, you only have certain um, functions that you have access to within the smart contract. So I'll show you all that now. Cool. Um, so now this should work. Um, now we can log in as admin. Admin PW is the password. If we log in, um, we can see the users that we have, and this is based on our wallet. Um, and it's important to see that they're enrolled, right? Um, so basically, we can register a new user, and that's going to call this. Um, oh, yeah, here we go. Register user. Um, and then after that, you'll see that we can enroll them, and that's going to call the enroll user function. So yeah, this register user again um, passes in the, the attributes, and then registers, and then enroll user actually um, imports the identity into the wallet. So that's kind of the main difference between the register and the and the enroll. Um, so let's go ahead and create. So I'm going to try to speed through this, but. I'll create an ID for GH farm, create the same password for it, and I'll make it a producer. And I'm going to put this on fast speed just because it's kind of boring. Retailer, EPS. I'm going to make this a shipper, a customer, which is love that name. Um, we're going to go customer, and then FDA, lastly. FDA, we'll have this password, and it'll be type um, regular. So again, if we look at our server, we can see all of the um, back end code working correctly. Um, we've seen that we've re re registered all these users, but you can see again that all of these people are not enrolled. So if we try to log in with them, we won't be able to. So we can test that if we want. So UPS, CPS, 
Um, it'll say users uh, not registered or enrolled again. So at this point, we'll click enroll. Um, so UPS, UPS, shipper, to the user is enrolled. Um, so we've done UPS, we'll do Walmart next. Okay, so now let's go ahead and log in as Walmart. And all the passwords I just made made the same thing as the user ID, not the most secure, but hey, we'll take it. Um, next, we're logged in as Walmart, and we'll create a couple orders. Click on place order, and we'll create some corn. And producer ID is just going to be the farm we have. Create that order. You can see that the order is created successfully, and then in the back end, we we see that we've actually created a, a smart contract transaction. So that's basically written some. Um, the, we've written basically this um, data to the block. Next, we're gonna place an over order for avocados. Create this order again. You can see. Transaction happening behind the scenes. Awesome. We've created those orders. Um, now we're going to actually go ahead and log out and we'll log in as GH Farm. And we should see those avocados and corn um, in, our, in our producer portal. And now we have this order ID that we can query at the end of the day. So, um, since we love avocados, or I love avocados, we're gonna only work with these avocados and not the corn. Um, so we're gonna accept the order. This will take a couple seconds. You'll see now that the order has been received and now we can assign a shipper. Um, we'll assign the UPS because that's our only shipper. Um, and of course, if you're working with someone other than UPS, that would be where that would go. And we've done all that, we, that the um, producer portal has access to and again, you can see within the smart contracts, um, which is great, that the producer, um, again, contract, um, so you can see the producer, um, producer can only, to be called by a producer, right? This receive order is what we did. And when we check, um, we have to be the, we have to be a producer to actually do this. This is again access control. We check if check if this user ID is um, is this specific producer ID. So that's that's where we're checking in the actual um, chain code if we're a producer. So we've checked that out. So that's kind of the access control within the smart contracts and kind of the querying capabilities too. And let's go ahead and log in as UPS. We're taking to our shipper portal. Um, now we can create a shipment. Again, now we'll uh, transport the shipment. And now we're awaiting the shipment. We see that it's in transit. And now we can log back in as Walmart and say that we have actually received that shipment. We've received the shipment. Again, this is all being, this is all being, um, you know, being recorded on the back end here. And if we query, if we can also do queries within our actual uh, VS Code extension, um, I'll show you that in a second. So now we've logged out as Walmart. Let's go ahead and log in as the FDA. So as the FDA, um, we have access to all of the transactions on the network because we want to be able to audit. Um, so again, we can see everything that's happened to the avocado. We've the, when the shipment was received, when it was in transit by the UPS, when the farm received it, when one of the order was created by Walmart, and then you know we can see the full life cycle. So Walmart created this order, the farm produced or saw the order, they assigned a shipment, then the UPS shipped it, and it was in transit, and then we actually received it in Walmart. So that's great. Now let's go ahead and log in as a customer. 
to see that history and trace that back to see that product um, history of where that happened in the supply chain. So again, we have this product ID for the avocado and we can see everything that's happened to this avocado. Um, we can see when, when the order is received, what time, all that stuff. So that's pretty much it. Um, again, if we want to actually submit transactions through our gateway, we can do that. Um, so let's show you that. So we can query all orders. Um, <clears throat> so we can query all the orders and we get um, all the orders. We can see that the, you know, the order, the order OCED, which was the um, avocados, I believe, yeah, avocado quantity 15. So again, you can you can kind of work through here the, the actual fabric gateway itself. So hopefully that was useful. Um, you can kind of go through a little bit of the code more yourself, but I think the big idea is that kind of the FDA has be able to query all these things and we can kind of limit the queries of, of what we return based on that certificate authority and based on these users that we've defined when we register and enroll them. So that's kind of the big picture. You can kind of use this to create more complex apps. Feel free to start the code if you like it, to like the video and stuff like that, post any questions you have. And um, if you want a free IBM Cloud account to actually try the Hyperledger or the IBM blockchain platform for free, I'll post all the details in the description, but you have to put in a credit card like any other cloud account, but we will give you a 500 free credit so you can try that out for at least a month um, and you should be good. So thanks again for watching. Um, stay safe and healthy. Thank you. Bye.